What a crazy day in the Canadian Football League. Thanks for checking this out, everybody. Marshall Ferguson here. I'm just breaking down Vernon Adams Jr., kind of what he is at this point, what the Tiger Cats just got themselves uh, after he was traded from Regina to the Tiger Cats today uh, in a trade for Charleston Hughes as well. First thing that sticks out to me whenever I watch uh, Vernon Adams Jr. play, of course, is the way that he can move around uh, outside of the pocket, break his way out of the pocket. This is a bit of a horror reel, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, this was a horrible 2016 Montreal Alouettes offensive line. He's basically scrambling around for his life the entire time, including this game against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. But he can step up in the pocket. He can make some throws down the field. Uh, he's got the ability to extend plays, which I think is really important in this league, of course, as we all understand that. Uh, maybe don't do it like that, where you're twisting yourself backwards and getting wrangled to the ground by A.C. Leonard. But he does have the ability to move around, and that's important. Make people miss. The duck and chuck right here to Nick Lewis, not bad. Uh, he is creative in the pocket, and that's a big, big part of his game, is trying to be able to make people miss. Now, he always makes the first guy miss, but the finish, when he gets inside the pocket, it can be a little bit lacking sometimes, but uh, that's something that he'll work on. He does have a tendency to throw up some punts at times, too. This is three shots that I found on tape from his CFL career so far where, yes, this is a rainy, cold, windy game at Old Mosaic, but he is I mean, he's just throwing balls to the sky, hoping that they come down. Uh, two of these three were not interceptions. They were knocked away, but I mean, they're basically 50-50 balls. Uh, and so that's something that June Jones, of course, and the Tiger Cats coaching staff will work on with him on that. Uh, when he does miss, he does miss high. He's one of those guys that, I don't know if it's an overstriding thing or if it's a footwork or getting his hips around or all the rest, but he just kind of rips it. Like, he's got a strong arm. He does wear double gloves, too, which is kind of funky. But uh, when he misses, he zips that thing, and it comes out high. And on plays like this with Devon Campbell, who should have picked it there. If you miss high in the Canadian Football League, there's zones, there's coverage, guys got to get around. Um, the other thing that I noticed with Vernon Adams is sometimes coverage sacks happen to him. This is all part of learning, of course, as a quarterback in the CFL, uh, but there are times where he's got a clean pocket and he's trying to make his way through progressions and he just doesn't really get there as of yet. Uh, maybe that'll change moving forward, but that on top of sometimes not recognizing when a team is just challenging your manhood like the Ticats did in 2016 by bringing the house on you several times over or bringing secondary blitzes off the edge when you don't have numbers, even though this play is very clearly a bust on the offensive line and the uh, J.C. Bull, you, Brandon Rutley connection there trying to protect him. But uh, it is something that pops up on film form. Short yardage, if you're wondering, backup quarterback, which you expect him to be in Hamilton, man, he has struggled in short yardage against the Tiger Cats. doesn't matter if he's in Montreal or Saskatchewan with this disaster of a speed option thing that Keenan LaFrance was furious about but um, he has struggled in short yardage in the last little while and I don't expect to see him do a ton of it but the interesting part of this is Jeremiah Masoli is getting paid not like a short yardage guy now so maybe you do bring him in and you do give him the chance to kind of run that second team with the short yardage unit. Uh, here he is in Montreal again what do I expect to see him do in Hamilton a little bit of underneath shovel stuff some moving of the pocket, perhaps. Get him outside. Use his athleticism. This is a great ball because it's wet and it's cold in Saskatchewan. He drops that into the bucket. It gets dropped by the receiver. But uh, he does these little RPOs as well, reading outside linebackers. He's got a good quick release. He likes to get the ball out to the boundary side, which is important in June Jones' run and shoot as well. So he can sling that thing out to Brandon Banks, out to the boundary if he gets any run. And he does throw well into windows like that shot to Nick Lewis. Uh, that's something that's really important in the system that June Jones has brought to Hamilton for the Tiger Cats. Uh, and he's going to have to be able to use that. Again, creating, creating, looking downfield, getting his hips around, and throwing a ball on a nasty day in Saskatchewan. Those are all really good things. Being able to make uh, a player like Newsom there from the Riders back in 2016 miss and then getting downfield and looking for work, that's unique. That looks a lot like Jeremiah Masoli to me personally. He's also been able to kind of figure out these, these staples of the CFL quickly, these play action throws to the flats. Those are things you just have to be able to do in the Canadian Football League if you want to have success. Uh, and sometimes he throws some weird planes. He throws some weird angles, and it doesn't work out for him sometimes. And then throws like this, where he's rolling to his right, he throws off the wrong foot and fading backwards and getting hit. And he's got the arm strength to be able to get it there. So there's a lot of things uh, that you can talk about that you like or you don't like with, with this guy and Vernon Adams Jr., but he can drop it in the bucket pretty good when he gets an opportunity from a clean pocket. We'll see what happens in Hamilton. Thanks for following along. Appreciate it. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter at TSN underscore Marsh.